Welcome to Uncut Angling. I'm Aaron Weeb. I'm up here in northern Manitoba at pristine Clearwater Lake, staying at the magnificent Evergreen Resort. And today I'm going to attempt to sight fish for some trophy lake trout. Stick around. You're watching Uncut Angling, which is made possible by Travel Manitoba, Alumacraft Boats, Yamaha Motor Canada, Shimano Reels, G Loomis Rods, FXR Outdoor Apparel, Humbert Electronics, and Minkota Motors. This episode is presented by Travel Manitoba and filmed in Manitoba's northern region. Good morning. Well, I've been up here for like a long time now. First I did the bass thing. Then I edited the bass thing, then I did the rainbow thing, then I did some editing on the rainbow thing. But the painful part is that I'm literally on the shore of this amazing lake trout lake, like the launch pad to go out and access these fishes right here. And I haven't done it yet. Well, until this past weekend, Peter and Mark Tully came up. I call this Disco Cisco. Cat, 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 let's do that again. We did some tip up fishing for lake trout. We caught some nice ones. Today though, I'm going out there for my first day of fishing and filming for lake trout on my own. Also going to be my last day up here. So it's a big push today. I'm going to do something that's not conventional for this time of year. I have some great bait. Thanks to Chris, Kel, Daryl, Annette, and Ernie for leaving me a bunch of suckers and tulipies and beautiful stuff. We're going to put that to use today and get going because the sun's going to come up very shortly. So what I'd really like to do today is catch some lake trout sight fishing which poses two problems. Even on a pristine lake like Clearwater, there's still a limit to where you can see bottom. And I figure it's about 25 feet of water. So the first problem is that lake trout fishing is prime in 40 to 50 feet of water is where I would target them. You can go down to 60, 70, 80, and you can come up to 30. But once you come under 30, I'm losing confidence with each foot. I like 29 feet, I like 28 feet, 27, 26, 25, 24. I wouldn't target them there, but today we're going to have to if we want to try and catch them sight fishing. The second problem is going to be we've got 40 inches of ice. So I'm going to have to do a ton of drilling with the solo. Then I'm going to use the saw to try and basically cut the cube out and pull some Lakers through a sight hole. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So, one, two, three, four, five. So what you saw me do at the start there is I just paced out the width of one corner of the shelter to make the width of my sight hole. And now I'm doing my very first corner holes and I'm really drilling them out at an angle because I want to have that undercut all the way around my sight hole so I've got the maximum visibility. Once I get to filling in the center holes, they'll all be vertical. Well, if your auger can do that, you're probably ready for northern Manitoba. Otherwise, you might want to leave your auger home in Georgia or wherever it's best suited for. Just to clarify, the reason that I did so much drilling instead of sawing is that an iceberg that size, even if I was able to saw it out, I wouldn't be able to manually push it under the ice or lift it out of the hole. I wouldn't be able to do anything with it. Okay, time to pop one hole through. There's still a lot of ice there. Okay, now it's time to saw the perimeter. I gotta cut some more holes. This is gonna be impossible. Cause this is crazy. Like even for me, this is crazy. And rather than doing all that sawing, I'm gonna drill a few more holes along the perimeter and then I can just connect them with the saw and then we're gonna have that chunk 
to deal with. You gotta keep them separated. Hey! That's a lot of slash, you know. The reality is though, all the slash and shavings has to come out one way or another. So they do it along the way, all at the end. It's just, it's just craziness. Love it. Well, you can see very clearly those pilot holes around the perimeter. We just have to connect them all with the saw. We're almost ready to fish. And we got freezing rain. So let's just start getting her done. You can see I'm following the angle that I cut all those holes with the auger at just to flare it out at the bottom for maximum visibility. That's not good. Easy cam post, covered in ice. Camera face, covered in ice. Camera body, covered in ice. Everything covered in ice. Good grief. Okay, let's sink this beast before all our camera gear is totally ruined. Oh man. It should be free. It should be free. We've got motion. We got her to budge. She's half corked here. Now we just need to slide her the rest of the way down somehow. It's a big piece still. I mean, there's a ton of ice. That's the play. It's gotta be the play. I don't know if you can see, but we got her. Freaking rights. That took some sweat. Okay, let's move the shelter into place. Pretty slick. We better be able to see bottom. Well, cameras are hanging, drying out above the heater. I didn't get wet. My gear held up. Andy Minio can be quiet for a second. I have yet to check if we can indeed see the bottom. I'm kind of scared to see. I mean, I know I'll be able to make it out, but I'm concerned about whether the cameras will be able to see it. So I've got a camera I'm gonna put on this easy cam post. It's lodged in some snow right over top of the hole. I've got my hot rods ready to go. One of them I'm gonna have a little Clio on it, tipped with a piece of sucker. And the other one I'm gonna have a quick strike Cisco. What else we got going on here? I had time to polish off a bag of ketchup chips. Most people stop there, but my sister, the crazy cricket, she would eat those in entirety. She would tip the bag up and she would dump truck these chips. That's called dump trucking. And now you know. Well, there's nowhere else I'd rather be than right here, right now, sight fishing. Thank you, by the way, Ken Kabelka, the owner of Evergreen Resort, who pointed out this rock spine where there's deep water access but 25, 26 feet on the top where we're fishing here. So good chances of seeing bottom, good chances of fish coming in. Let's find out. <clears throat> Let's turn out the lights. The moment of truth. One light out, two lights out. Oh yeah, I can see good size rocks down there. She is descending. Oh, there's a lake trout, little guy. My tulipy's just getting down to bottom. No idea if that showed up on camera or not. But I gotta get my jigging spoon down there as well. Seeing a fish ready is an awesome sign, but there are little trout all over the lake, so it's not that much of an accomplishment. It'll be really something to see an adult fish. Check out that butt. Oh, 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 oh. But we still there. There's one down there. He slashed at my spoon. And now he's looking at the dead bait. Got him! Sight fishing for lake trout on Clearwater Lake. Woohoo! <laughs> oh, come on up. <laughs> okay, that was awesome. There's a starter fish. Little Cleo with a piece of sucker. Look at how pretty he is. Put her back. Oh, geez. Success. 
a sight fished lake trout in 26, maybe 27 feet of water. Right there is what I caught it on blue and silver, little Cleo, a little piece of sucker on there. And he was hungry. It sounds like it's doing crazy things out there. We gotta check this out. Oh, more snow. Winter's not over. Cannot see shore. Oh, I see a trout. He's down by the tulipy. But maybe I can bring him up to the Cleo. Oh, he's gonna come up high in the water column. Look at this. Keep coming, guy. Keep coming. Oh yeah, this is what I want. He is almost in the hole. <laughs> Come on, eat it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's sick. Oh, is that ever sick? Oh, that fish I coaxed up to being in the hole basically when it struck. Just kept teasing that spoon. And he did not want to give up on it. That is awesome. That is so awesome. Worth spending all that time drilling the hole for. Let's get this guy back. Okay. Shh. <laughs> Lively release. Awesome. Obviously, that's still a major stepping stone type fish. There's a long way to go in lake trout sizes on this lake. But I'm digging what's going on here. I'm digging his aggression. He was in the hole. Ericadia is going to be so impressed with his custom made rods that he designed. He keeps asking me, did you get a big laker yet? Did you get a big laker yet? And no, I still didn't get a big laker, but I did do a boat flip on kind of a, a lower end on the medium scale of lake trout sizes. That was about a 28 incher or something. Here comes another one. Little guy up in the water column. I'm going to try and coax him up again because that was just so electric getting him so high in the column. I know he'll eat it if I drop it down there, but I want to bring him up for more of a visual here. Kind of like the visual you're getting on my butt. Oh, 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 oh. Straight to it. Uh, I'd say he might be a couple inches bigger than the other ones. Oh, you son of a gun. Oh, I shouldn't have tried to lift him up. I should have just caught him. This is the kind of lake trout activity you can expect to have like all over the lake. There's so many lake trout in this lake. They're on flats, they're on ridges and drop-offs and rock structure. There's just so many lake trout in Clearwater Lake. It's so much fun on a flasher. It's so much fun with the underwater camera. And today it's fun in a sight fishing hole. This is something I haven't done all winter, so I needed to scratch the itch. Wanna play ball? Look at this. Keep coming. Yeah, keep coming. Keep coming. Oh, oh, there we go. In the hole. He's in the hole. That fish is in the hole. Can you believe that? He swam into the hole. I'm telling you, if the other one was at the bottom of the hole level, this one was in the hole. And this is a small trout, but it is so cool looking. It's like leopard printing. That is very neat. Very beautiful. Wow. Little Cleo. The best trout spoon ever made. Little Cleo all day. Crazy aggression. Like there is no other species that's aggressive like a lake trout that'll chase it up into the hole like that. Wow. Here we go again. Oh. Come get it, buddy. Come on. Come on, Mr. Lake Trout. He loves it, but he doesn't love it. Come on. That fluttering. He just can't handle it. It's so unpredictable and it's so slowed with that chunk of sucker on there. Look at him. He loves it, but he won't eat it yet. Like this is so fun. Imagine if I would just leave it down lower, how easy it would be to catch him. But I'm dragging him right up into the hole here. Come on, bud. Let's do this thing. Let it fall. And down he goes. <laughs> it took a dead fall, but I finally got him. <laughs> Hilarious. That is a gorgeous fish. Look at how big those spots are. So cool. I think we're pretty much done here. We've just about lost our vision for sight fishing. They did really like this 
one third ounce blue and silver little Clio. That piece of sucker actually slowed the flutter and seemed to work really good. I'm usually opposed to tipping active jigging baits, but whatever. I have that spoon on a little crankbait snap and then I have probably five or six feet of 14 pound fluorocarbon and then the main line 15 pound Power Pro Ice Tech and this is a 50 size Shimano reel which is really nice for ice fishing. It fits in your hand really good and it's a 45 inch medium power hot rod which is really well suited for a jigging spoon like this which is maybe a relatively small bait for lake trope but I kind of wanted to catch every fish that came in and now it is time for me to go all the way home. I've had a great stint here at Evergreen Resort and I think I got three shows filmed and I will find some ice blocks or go to shore and get a stick or something and mark this hole out so that people are aware of it because it is a hazard for the next, you know, 12 to 24 hours depending on how cold it is overnight. So you got to do your part to make sure that somebody's not going to have an accident with a hole like this. Good night. Manitoba, Canada's heart beats. I think I'm going home. But I'm craving redemption with a big lake trout. For me, I want to catch a big lake trout. I'm craving, I'm craving big fish. I'm craving big lake trout redemption. I'm craving one more day, a redemption day, but I'm craving redemption on a big lake trout. <sighs>